approaching Crawford Notch right now on Highway 302 in New Hampshire. This whole area is a wonderful all-season destination. We are here for winter sports, uh, skiing obviously, although right now there's not an awful lot of snow at the moment. But you can see the mountain ahead of us, uh, the mountains are coming together very, very closely here, forming a notch or a narrow passage uh, through these uh, ancient mountain peaks here. And the mountain right in front of me actually, there's an area that runs across it sort of horizontally, and that's a railway line. This area was developed in the late 1800s for tourism, and some entrepreneurs started building a, a railroad through this area that would bring dozens of trains every week to some of the, the grand hotels of the time that were located all throughout this area. One of these grand hotels is still uh, left today, and that is the Mount Washington Hotel. Very historic property, opened in 1902. That's my destination for today. That's uh, that's where I'm headed right now. I'm, um, I've scheduled a tour to get an idea of, of what this historic property looks like from inside. And um, But this area has been popular with tourists probably from about the 1880s onwards, uh, when uh, some fit financiers and, and industrialists started to, uh, to build big um, big uh, hotels at the time, most of which unfortunately ended up burning down because they were constructed of wood. Um, interestingly enough, many of these blazes uh, that affected these properties happened more than once. So a hotel would burn down one time, would be rebuilt in a year or two, and then uh, within a fairly short period of time, another five, six, ten years later, or even less sometimes than that, it would burn down again. So uh, wooden hotel construction uh, was always a bit of a, a hazard, uh, not the least of which of course was of course the fire hazard and sprinklers I don't think had been invented yet at that time. That's one of the reasons why there are so few of these grand hotels that were built in the late 1800s during the Victorian era. See there's a railway trestle over there now, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, but that's that's essentially how people got to these grand hotels. They would board the trains in big cities like New York City and Philadelphia, Boston, and they would come up here, and they would spend the summer up here. Um, most of them, of course, were wealthy families. They would come with their kids. They would come with their governesses and with their personal servants and their butlers. Um, so these grand hotels really were... Um, were basically enclaves uh, for the wealthy of the time and we're passing through Crawford Notch here as you can tell. The mountains come really really close together. Leaving Crawford Notch through State Park, it just said here. And we're now coming out, see Mount Washington via Cog Railway. Mount Washington is the big mountain on the right hand side of me that you can't see right now. Uh, but it's essentially I think the highest peak in the northeast at over 6,000 feet and I just wanted to tell you right here I think this was the location of, uh, of another Grand Hotel it's now the Appalachian Mountain Club Highland Center be hidden behind the snowbank at the moment but I just wanted to give you a little shot of that building and um, I will be coming back to you very shortly from my trip to the Mount Washington Hotel, very, very historic hotel property, uh, where I'm hoping to get a tour and get a little bit of a historic introduction to early tourism here in uh, the White Mountains of New Hampshire.